So yeah, um, hello. Uh, thanks for coming. <laughs> Let's work together. UCD research, UCD library, and altmetrics. Um, when I came up with this title, "Let's work together," I was in, intending to play this famous Ken Teat song, um, but then I decided against it, and I'm kind of glad that I did because uh, the music that. And, is played in Minute Library is so much better. So, I <laughs> um, so what I want to talk about, we want to talk about, is um, how we collaborate um, as a library or as a unit in the library with uh, UCD Research, which is a different unit, obviously, in um, UCD. Um, when I talk about collaboration um, of UCD Library with UCD Research, I mainly, but not exclusively, um, mean uh, our research services unit in uh, UCD Library, which has been founded like three years ago. And it just occurred to me that I usually say our newly founded uh, unit, but newly is not really appropriate anymore. So from now on, I'm going to drop this. Um, I say only our research services unit. So we collaborate with uh, them in a number of ways. Um, we uh, have the research repository that Joseph is managing, and uh, this connects with the research management system. Um, we, we share uh, bibliometrics tools like SciVal and um, Insights. We, we talk about, we assess, and we evaluate, and so on. Um, we developed a quality review framework for, um, to support schools and in institutes that are up for a quality review. We run digital technology workshops um, starting next uh, semester, and we work together on uh, altmetrics. Um, looking at the, at the slide, I, I just see that the research services, uh, the, no, the research, whoops, sorry, one the research office building, now I can't go back. Um, anyway, uh, this has the blue sky and, uh, oh, here we go. Blue sky and the library on the right-hand side is a little bit more cloudy. This was not intentional, it was a purely <laughs> coincidence. Um, so, altmetrics, just a little reality check. Who knows what altmetrics is? Hands up. So this, yeah, yeah, that, that's quite good. We're all librarians, so that, so it can be really quick. Um, uh, Altmetrics is a new method to uh, track uh, attention of uh, publicational research outputs in um, social media, but uh, also uh, non-traditional resources um, or news media and so on. It's complementary to traditional um, citation-based um, analysis. And um, it, it has some benefits because it's more timely. It, it's right there. You can measure, you can count it right away. Societal impact capturing non-traditional uh, outputs. It has also caveats. They're not standards yet. Um, uh, many researchers don't use social media for research, actually, more than you might think. And it's open to gaming. Okay. So um, this is just a graph what uh, Altmetrics is doing in general. Um, and uh, there are three major players, three major um, companies, uh, startups that are uh, providing Altmetrics services, Altmetrics data. One is called Altmetric.com. Um, the other one, uh, sort of a competitor, is uh, Plum Analytics. And the third one is uh, Impact Story. They are um, targeting more individual uh, researchers. We have um, a subscription now to altmetrics.com, altmetric.com, altmetric for institution. Um, uh, this subscription was taken up by the uh, research office, and how this came to pass is something that Joseph will tell you about. Okay. This, is, this is my cameo here. Um, let's see. I, I first heard about um, uh, altmetrics through Michael's work, uh, but it came up as a very big topic at Open Repositories 2014. Uh, one of the conversations was um, with uh, Queen's University uh, of Technology, Queensland. Um, and the, their discussion was about, they were going to embed altmetrics into their institutional repository at the item level uh, and show how often each item had been mentioned, plus a lot of other information like Scopus and Web of uh, Knowledge citations. Um, and their question was, what should we call this? And they called it the impact and interest segment or feature in the repository. Um, and I, I like that idea quite a lot because it's low risk, easy, uh, it's free to implement. Um, so I thought that it would be a great way to attract attention to our repository. Um, this is what it looks like in Queensland. And you can see here the um, altmetric scores here but there's quite a lot of other information. Um, so I, in November 2014, I, I went about building something similar, um, or blatantly plagiarizing what I had seen there. Um, so 
it, the, the, the whole build, the feature took me about a week to build. Uh, the altmetrics portion took about 20 minutes. Uh, because the only trick is getting the DOI to appear in this uh, little piece of code down here. Um, <clears throat> and that's very easy in DSpace and probably in ePrints as well. Uh, this is what it looks like on Research Repository. This splash of color down here is altmetrics. And um, I, I quite like the look of that. Uh, you can also see, though, I've added in citations from Scopus and our, uh, the, the downloads for this particular item. Uh, which we didn't have that embedded at the item level before. Uh, this is a particularly good example because <coughs> it's pretty much been talked about by everybody, um, including you see things like um, Wikipedia, which is a new feature. Um, Faculty of a Thousand is here. And also it can do policy documents. Um, UCD Research already knew about altmetrics before we talked about it, before I embedded it in the repository. Uh, they were particularly interested when we demonstrated it in uh, the policy papers because this is, as far as I know, the only way to track citations in government and policy papers. So they saw this as a great way to demonstrate societal impact for our research. So we bought a year subscription, and Michael will tell you about implementation of that. Um, so we, uh, when, Joseph said, when Joseph said we bought a subscription, it's UCD Research because they had the money. Um, so they took up a subscription and it's sort of a pilot project and an evaluation. We will see how it goes and, and uh, how useful it is and so on. Um, so they provided the euros. Um, and the UCD Research also provided the DOIs. So in order to have it, get it working, um, you need to uh, send uh, identifiers, mainly DOIs, to altmetric.com. They implement it in their, oops, in their uh, system and then track these individual um, uh, publications or research outputs. Um, they uh, submitted uh, about 13,000 uh, individual DOIs, so all the publications they could find in their uh, research management system, and about 2,700 have mentions in Altmetric. So it's about, it's exactly 21%, I calculated it before. Um, so you see it's not, it, it's useful, but it doesn't capture everything. So that's uh, something to, kept in, to be keep in, keep in mind for altmetrics in general. That's how it looks like. Um, so we have a campus-wide license. Everybody can see it. Um, you see here the whole picture, but then you can drill down by, um, by, by school, by uh, institute, uh, also for an individual. Um, you can look how many mentions in newspapers, uh, news media uh, are happening, how many. Uh, blocks have cited, um, research blocks have cited a particular publication and so on and so on. So it, it's quite, quite slick, it works quite well, um, with all the caveats being uh, kept in mind. Um, in the pilot phase, oh, in the pilot phase we have uh, uh, the UCD research um, provided the DOIs. Uh, we provide training as the library. Um, we have something on our bibliometrics guide. Um, we have also internal uh, in, in, informal working groups. We talk together. Um, we meet regularly with UCD research, evaluate the tool, and so on and so on. Um, there are not really any problems with that. Sometimes uh, there's a little bit of a problem with your restriction and so on. And um, we could could a little bit look like this one. So everybody wants to play with the, with the new toy, but um, uh, he who call, no, he who pays the piper calls the tune. I think it is so. Um, we are a little bit um, uh, on, on not on the sideline, but we collaborate uh, quite well, as you can see in this picture. And uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, thank you very much. Okay, well, thank you very much, uh, everybody. Um, are there any questions from the audience? To, yeah, one at the back. Just, if you just wait for the mic, if that's okay. Thanks. Hi, Ross Pan from UCD. Um, this is about the first presentation. Can I just clarify who is producing your Animoto and Powtoon? Is it just one person or is it spread across the library staff? Um, at the moment, myself and my colleague Elaine, uh, being, we work on a lot of them, but um, um, as, the, as, as Bernie mentioned as well, they use some of them, created themselves within the blog. 
they're very easy to create because we've kind of set up a generic account. So um, once somebody can go in and play around with it and they can create their own video. So um, at the moment, there's, there's a few of us just using it. Okay. Thanks, Rosie. Thanks, Fiona. Any further questions? The chair's prerogative kicks in then. Um, it strikes me that what we've been listening to amounts to kind of new practices in librarianship and that this is such a long way from some of the things that Sarah was referencing this morning about what people think we do. <laughs> um, we've not heard the word book once in the last 45 minutes. Let's just bear with that. Uh, and note that we still do all the things we were doing anyway and all of this is on top of, on top of that. But thinking about um, you know, the, three, the three presentations there, we've, we've got web broadcasting, we've got web design, we've got news media, contemporary news media, analytics. How many of those phrases do you think would be associated with librarianship outside of our profession at the moment? It's absolutely fascinating. Well, I was just gonna throw a question out to the panel, as you now are especially as one of you took my seat. Um, <laughs> is, uh, I was determined to get that in before, before 12 o'clock. I went up watching you. Um, is, uh, you know, what new training did you receive for this? Uh, or would you like to have uh, in the future? Or what new roles do you feel you might need within your teams to develop these, as I term them, new practices in librarianship? We did, from the point of view of the blog, we didn't actually receive any training. We sort of, we taught ourselves along the way and I think that's a very good way to learn because quite often we do get training sessions which are all very valuable, but then you go away and you forget and you don't use, you know, um, the, the things that you learn. So when you're, when you're doing it yourself, the exercise, uh, you know, you do retain the information and you can apply it then across the board. So I think, you know, from the point of view of the blog, our own experience from um, developing it ourselves and, and, and doing it ourselves was um, really, really, you know, good. You know, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I could echo that. Um, apart from, I, I did get XML training in my library degree in around 2004, but that sparked my interest in code and from there I'm self-taught. XML, XSL, Java, uh, SQL. Self-taught. Great. Fiona? Yeah. Yesterday, um, I was at Josh's talk that talked about um, the luxury they had of um, a, web, a web designer, and I was literally green at that stage. <laughs> so a lot of the stuff that we are using, it's free, and we have taught ourselves. And yes, I've locked my way, myself away in a room for half an hour and just sat down and, and put the headphones on and have a listen. Um, I think I would agree with everyone that if you're learning it yourself, then you can decide as you go through it, you'll know what is working and what isn't working. And you can cut away, this isn't going to work. I've, we, can, we can look at that, it's not going to. So um, yeah, it can take some time, but I think it's definitely worth it. And you can create something very original to your institution as well. Okay, thank you. I think, I think, it's, yeah. Yeah, I think it's amazing um, how our roles evolve <laughs> into, into different areas. We heard this yesterday, Josh talking about outreach and so on. And the, uh, some, some of us don't do any traditional librarian work anymore. Um, and uh, maybe this is something libraries should pay attention to a little bit. And, and at some point it might be better to, to recruit somebody from, from a different area, not a librarian, to, um, to do certain things in the library that are um, very, very specialized and that librarians need a long time uh, to, to train on and, uh, and, and to acquire the knowledge and, and skills for that. Yeah, well, thank you, Michael. Noted. And uh, <laughs> I've now been pointed at by Michelle, lit up in red by Owen. Uh, <laughs> I thought I was immune from this. Um, but thank, thank, you, thank you all very much. I think if one thing it's proved is that librarians are instinctive entrepreneurs. So if we can thank our panel again, please. <laughs>